Yes, 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 yes. Welcome back to 108 Dragons TV, baby. It's your host, Lemon23, aka Lemetheus. And I hope everybody got the multiplayer mayhem this weekend. Making sure you get out there and be competitive. You know how your boy do. I'm going to be hitting y'all with some frequent replays of me putting people down in multiple games. You already know how I do. Maybe I might even hit y'all with winning a checker flag or two like my boy K-Mega does. But if you're new here, consider liking and subscribing. I drop all that hot fire news for you. And we bring that entertainment daily. Facts. Like and subscribe, baby. It is greatly appreciated for y'all giving me y'all attention. Now let's hop into this gaming news. First topic of today. And let me tell y'all something. I think this is just a little bit insane coming from Rainbow Six Siege on PC. They have began to ban players for 27 minutes for cursing in a game. Now, they also talk about racial and homophobic uh, slurs in the chat. Listen, man. Listen. Let me tell y'all something about gaming and disrespect amongst gamers. We are here to game. All nationalities, colors, ages. Gaming brings everybody together, man. If you have a personal problem with a different nationality or individual, a male or female, what you need to do is mute your goddamn mic. Because I think I'm going for this. And it's going to be on the PC side. They're banning for your first offense is going to be 20 minutes for your first offense. And the second and third offenses will be up to two hour bans. And... They will do official investigations if you are constantly named as a racial or homophobic slur or disrespecter, disrespectful person towards somebody's nationality. And you know what? I agree. They need this on live. They need this on PlayStation. You really don't deal with this on um, Nintendo Switch. You know the voice chat over there. We ain't going to get into that. But on PC, I really never really dealt with you know, nobody calling me the N-word or acting crazy or nothing. But for those people out there that have those personal issues, just mute your mic. Because people can mute you. And this is what people fail to do. It's like I do people on Twitter. You act crazy, I block you. I'm the, the King Day Matumbo with Twitter, baby. I'm always waving that finger. Now let's get into some Spider-Man news. Analysts are predicting that Spider-Man is primed for victory and success this holiday season and let me tell you something i cannot disagree with this statement you know these analysts be bugging and i do not agree with them half the time but this is basically a common sense situation being a hype train that's behind this game being that I played it at E3, excellent gameplay, excellent graphics, excellent interaction. I am stoked. I'm a Spider-Man fan, and I'm ready. And for those people out there, the game will not have a full daylight night cycle. So just get it out your head. Stop talking about it on Reddit and all these other places that y'all be talking about this. But the game is fantastic. I played it. It's definitely going to be a joy to have in my PlayStation 4's arsenal of games. And yes, I did pick up the PlayStation VR. Yes, I got it for like $185. And yes, I got some titles to talk about. But we're not doing that this episode. What I am going to do is get into some more gameplay so I can give you my honest perspective. Because right now, it still graphically ain't grabbing me. But I'm going to tell you this, you definitely are getting the immersion in the games that I currently own. And I got a nice little arsenal, a nice little catalog, and I'm enjoying it. Not for $500, $200 and under, I can go with that. Facts. Now let's jump into this Gears of War, baby. Now, Coalition is on the record to say that this will be the biggest 
Gears of War game they have ever created. But I am going to say this. This is Coalition's only other Gears of War. <laughs> but they said that is the this is the biggest project they have to offer to date. And they're working around the clock to bring fast-paced, over-the-top, gory action. And with great storytelling. Now, from what I saw at E3... People are excited. And yes, they said they're going to be introducing a new enemy in Gears of War 5. Now, that was my only complaint in Gears of War 4. That they needed to bring out some new enemies. Start a new era. You know, them dudes coming basically back from the dead. <laughs> the locusts. <laughs> okay. They had little metallic pieces on them. You know, they was like locust zombies. And uh, those uh, those grabbers was good, too. Remind me of the movie Tremors. Definitely put me right in the middle of that. I love the gameplay. Love the multiplayer. But to hear that they're working around the clock on a AAA billion-dollar franchise is also exciting news. And, it's, and, you know, talking to these developers at E3, they definitely take pride in their craft. I can see why they be complaining about certain things because they give a damn on what they put into their work they want you to appreciate it so it's always good to hear developers say we're busting our asses out here to give you the best experience i'm with that now let's get into why ashen developer explains why they are exclusive to one console and we know that is the xbox one let's see what they're talking about here right now ashen's developer say they are exclusive to the Xbox One and have no plans on a PS4 and a Switch version. Microsoft has been a staunch supporter of indie development games since the 360 days. Since the days of Braid and Limbo and the ID at Xbox program. That's what the team at Aurora 44 has said. We recently sat down and talked about the game and the creative director Derek Bradley and asked him about what drove developers the decision to keep their game the console exclusive to Xbox One. Bradley told us it is very has been very important to have the support of the Microsoft team behind us for constant over a three year period. They were our very first supporters. And Alex Garvin discovering us in 2014 and bringing us to Team Xbox, Bradley told Gaming Boat, we shot for the stars with Ashen and the Xbox team champion division, including three E3 briefings since. So being that Microsoft has put two, foot, two feet ahead of them, and helped the developer, supported them from day one, basically exposing these people to the masses. They're saying they're going to keep this game in-house with Xbox and have no plans for PS4 and Switch versions. Now, you know, that's kind of sad because, you know, I always complain on PS4 that they get exclusives with no financial gain. It's just like a homeboy hookup. And this seems the same way here. I don't agree with it on PlayStation, and I'm not going to agree with it on Xbox. No one should be forced to play a third-party game and have to buy a system just to play it. I don't think that's right. I'm not for that. But, you know, it's an exclusive. Microsoft can choke it up. We have an exclusive. Okay, okay, okay. But, like I said, PlayStation 4 fans would also like this type of game because they damn sure like Dark Souls and Bloodborne and Neo. And this is their style of game. I don't agree with this. Now let's hop into Crackdown. And what the hell happened? And why the delay is now February? Let's talk about this. Now we know Crackdown, Crackdown has been in development and seen delays, mistakes, and all kind of nonsense multiplayer hiccups. But they said it was mostly on the part of Xbox executives. But it sounds like the reason for most of the delay has been the focus of PvP multiplayer mode. The single player is already finished 
and has been for a while, according to recent support, uh, reports. Now, let me tell you something, man. One thing Microsoft does right, and Sony need to take these notes from Microsoft. You know, Sony's online division, they don't have one. Nobody plays Uncharted. Nobody plays Last of Us. Their online multiplayer presence is non-existent. They have to depend on third parties. One thing with Microsoft, and we've seen in the recent game, State of Decay, Sea of Thieves, the multi the multiplayer aspect of Microsoft and these games are evident and successful. Every billion dollar franchise, which they have three, Halo, Gears, and Forza, all of them have a multiplayer component that has millions of people playing a day. And this is a subject that Sony can take out of their book and learn something. Now, I can see them delaying Crackdown 3 because multiplayer is a very big aspect of Crackdown, first of all, in terms of co-op and PvP. And Microsoft ain't going to release the game until that PvP is correct. They are not going to release a game that's broken. They're just not going to do it. They're not going to release it and then release a multiplayer later, a.k.a. Ghost Recon. <laughs> they did that. Um, Microsoft is not going to do that. They're going to give you the whole game. And hopefully we all get to enjoy the game. Because what I saw the E3 was very impressive. The graphics has definitely changed. And they changed the damn development team in the middle of making the game. Let's hope this multiplayer is definitely worth the wait. And from reports are saying the single player is done. That's all the news I have for you today. Like I said in the beginning, if you're new here, consider liking and subscribing. Today's episode was long because I wanted to give y'all that great news. And I'm out. Cheers.